over Miller. Beautiful pass. Right over to Bowers, who resets it now with Mayberry. Mayberry takes the jumper. Surprising. Rebound by Augman. He had Miller wide open, uncovered underneath the basket. Unlike Mayberry to take that shot. Hot day almost with the steal. And a travel called on Stacy Augman. Excellent overplay defense by Day, who has always been known as an offensive player to last summer. And he became Mike Krzyzewski's stopper defensively at the forward spot for the national team. He's got some assignment today, Billy. Here's Oliver Miller down low. And was it tied up? Don't they call a foul on Apples? That is called a solid screen that Oliver Miller put on with a beautiful pick and roll play. And UNLV will have to defend that a lot better than they did on that occasion. They're going to say he was in the act of shooting. Oliver Miller will attempt to. Junior from Fort Worth, third in the nation. In field goal percentage, 70% from the floor, missing the first. Great shot blocker as well. Probably has, for a man his side, as quick a feat as I've ever seen in basketball. He's an excellent passer. Good work ethic. Ackles now gets it over to Anthony. Still looking for the game's first points. And quick hands as he really took it away from Augman. Augman gets it back out high. And Hunt delivers it low to Larry Johnson. Good little pass to Augman. Slam dunk to get it started on the scoreboard. And a steal by Augman, but he's out of bounds. Jim, I'm going to make a little bit of an appraisal here. If Arkansas, which is their tactic, has that much overplay defense that far away from the basket, look for Larry Johnson to start posting up down low and have a big game inside because there won't be a lot of help on the double team. Vegas goes zone. Todd Day will take the three. He's a good one. Critical mistake by Anderson Hunt. He's got to recognize who's in that zone. Day has unlimited range. Augman spins past Day in the corner. Hunt, he can shoot the three. He made six of them last year in the game against Arkansas. One by Vegas. Quickly down court to Day. And a turnover committed by Arkansas. Arkansas will run that break. Yesterday they worked on their break drills offensively. They start out one on one. They go two on two, three on three, then five on five. They run the break beautifully. See how far out they're picking up UNLV. Anthony misses the three. Mayberry gets the three ball. On a wing to Morris. Surprising he shot that ball straight in. They use the technique to shoot that ball off the boards in practice time and time again. Free is Ackles over Miller. Nope, partially blocked by Miller. He has Bowers. Blocked by Hunt for the foul call. Oliver Miller, one of the great shot blockers ever at Arkansas, will set the career and seasonal records in time. You can see his timing. He stayed down on the floor until Ackles went ahead and made his move and then went up and beautifully not only blocked the shot but kept control, which he probably does as well as any shot blocker in the country. They called goaltending, Billy. On the basket by Bowers, goaltending called against Hunt, so Bowers can make it a three-point play with this free throw. As long as that ball was in contact of the hand, I don't know how they could go ahead and call goaltending. No, I don't understand that one. But Bowers gives Arkansas the three-point lead early. And here you can see full-court pressure, not guarding Ackles, Miller back for safety. Miller showing quickness again, batting it out of bounds. Billy, he set the single season block record in the game against Houston this week, but uh, still a little distance to go before he breaks Andrew Lang's career block record at Arkansas. With plenty of time to go, that should be his. Augman, three-point shot. Good blocking out by Mayberry. And Day picks up the rebound, swinging it back over to Mayberry. Drive in the lane and dishing to Miller. Loose ball picked up by Johnson. Saw it coming. And a foul called on Johnson. Ill advised pass by Larry Johnson. He and Day going after each other verbally. 
Johnson was trying to get the ball over to Greg Anthony. Without question, he got him with a body. And we see two different bodies going up against each other here in this one. Larry Johnson, one of the strongest players in America. And Todd Day, extremely thin. Jim, going back to Vegas now, in terms of the way this game is being played, it's time to get Larry Johnson the ball down in low. They've been playing strictly on the perimeter. Day, a 75% free throw shooter. Top score on the team, 22 a game. He now has five, and it's a five-point Arkansas lead. The four on three. Day high in the air. And a foul called in the shot by Hunt. That's his second. Beautiful touch by Day just to get that ball softly up on the rim. Even if the shot is missed, they have a putback. The pass was headed for Larry Johnson. There's great anticipation by Oliver Miller, an extremely intelligent basketball player. The good dish. Now watch how soft Day gets his ball up on the rim, knowing Miller's there for the tap-in. Foul was before the shot. They'll bring it in underneath. Four fouls on UNLV, none on Arkansas. Little off balance shot by Day, doesn't drop. Anthony, one handed up to Augman, another dunk for Augman. Excellent pass off the dribble, and Larry Johnson made that play by setting the screen so Augman had nobody to pick him up. Back to man to man goes Vegas. Change their defense from the zone to man to man. Trying to slow this game down a little bit, surprisingly. Where did you think this game was headed, Billy? Well, we know that Nolan Richardson wanted to play at full blast on both ends of the court. It looks like UNLV would like to turn it into more of a half-court game. Mayberry missing on the oh, turnaround. Oh, pass! <laughs> to Hunt! What a pass! That was about 75 feet, strictly with a wrist. Five for Hunt. There's that solid screen coming up by Miller. He can set him, like you said, Billy, and Mayberry loses control out of bounds. Turnover by Mayberry, but you got to love this point guard matchup today between Anthony and Mayberry. Well, an adjustment's going to have to be made on the solid screens because you can't allow Mayberry to just come off that screen that easily. And he's called for the block as Mayberry. That's the first on Arkansas in the game. And a timeout on the floor. Number one, trailing by one in the game's first four minutes. We've seen two excellent passes by UNLV from the backcourt. Here we're going to see Greg Anthony fire this ball all the way down to a cutting Stacey Augman. Keep your eye, however, on Larry Johnson, who is going to set a great screen here to allow Augman to have the uncontested layup. Watch Johnson setting the screen. Augman goes in. No way a defender. Now, in the next play, we'll see Larry Johnson with that pass I said was about 75 feet, just with the wrist, all the way down there. Hunt lays it in. Great plays. And now Larry Johnson will inbound for UNLV. Jim, I'm still waiting for Johnson in the low post. Here he is. Now, well, Morris works around him to deny position. But that, Jerry Tarkane in that timeout said, we're going to let Larry Johnson get the ball down inside a little bit. He hadn't touched it yet down there today. You can see how much they're concentrating on the play. There it is. And they got it over Morris, and Johnson banks it home. That's a, an old junior college matchup between those two today. Well, Tarkane didn't win 83% of his game sitting over there asleep on the bench, and it was so obvious that that's the place to go with that pressure on the perimeter. Six unanswered points for the running Rebels. Day drives and in the lane is called for a traveling violation. Now Todd trying to make a play that Stacy Augman wouldn't let him have. A lot of John going on out there between Augman and Day right now. Now Augman's turn to work on Day. Takes the step. Oh, oh. Oliver. Miller helped strip it free. And Larry Johnson acknowledged that block by looking at Oliver Miller and saying that was a super play. Augman had beaten Day to the hoop. Great block. Day almost, yes, forces the steal. Arlen Bowers has it, and he'll go ahead and lay it in. 
Now Ackles not getting into play. Almost another steal, but it sets up now as a four on one. Ackles, whoa. <laughs> Block that one. <laughs> He'd have taken his arm off. I'm telling you, don't get the arm in the way. Lobbing it over Ackles. And Miller. Perfectly timed pass. Now Arkansas changing their defense a little bit. They're guarding everybody now so that Ackles can't be the guy that gets the easy pass in. Little zone pressure. Back to Ackles, floating down the lane, and another basket for Ackles. Four quick ones. Day at the other end. Offensive. Oliver Miller showing he can throw the long baseball pass as well. A good job by Hunt getting all the way back on Day. Day's first, second team foul on Arkansas. The man who usually is in foul trouble for this team is prone to be in foul trouble is Oliver Miller, but not a foul to this point. Now, a walk-on comes into the game for Arkansas, Ernie Murray. And Bowers will sit. Hard to believe that a walk-on could play at this level of competition. Number one, number two. Hard to, he has done a fine job for the club. Hard to believe he can't find a scholarship for him. Last year he was a walk-on, one player. Michael Hogue quit the team, and they gave him a scholarship for the second semester. But this year he came back as a walk-on again. Boy, Johnson is clearing out some people in the low post. Anthony drove on Murray and scores the basket. Neither team showing any fatigue at this point, even an emotional fatigue that might take place so early in a ball game. Trying to get the second win, but they don't need it yet. Miller delivers it out high. Murray on the three. There's the walk on. Ernie Murray. There's Augman. And Oliver Miller called for the foul. Augman was losing control of it as he went up. It's a good clean play, though, by Oliver Miller. There was no question in the mind of Stacy Augman that he was going all the way to the hoop on that play. Billy, we were looking at some numbers and in terms of national ranking statistics, scoring offense, UNLV is number three. Margin of victory, they're on an all-time record pace. But you like the last two numbers. Well, those are unbelievable to be in the top of field goal shooting and also right near the top of field goal shooting percentage defense. So some combination. You can see also rebound margin, three-point field goal percentage. And that margin of victory is, is one that uh, has stood for a long time with the great UCLA Walton clubs back in 73. Roosevelt Wallace is in for Arkansas. Has proven to be an explosive scorer. Hogman makes one of two. The long rebound comes back to Johnson, and UNLV will set the offense. Spencer in for UNLV. Elmore Spencer missing the turnaround. And Mayberry as they try to get the entry pass back to Elmore Spencer. Oliver Miller would have had a sure lay-in. Instead, it's a three-point shot. Murray missing. Quick outlet again to Anthony. Three on two. Augman. What we're having right now is UNLV starting to get their break going because Larry Johnson and before Ackles and now Spencer are able to out-rebound them three against two inside. Wallace traveled. And Jim, that could be a factor. If UNLV can release three men and count on Johnson and now Spencer to control those boards, then Arkansas can't crash everybody to the board. Dropping it in to the seven-footer, Elmore Spencer. Oh, boy, they just keep coming up with they great do. players, don't they, Billy? And as we said at the top of the show, K.O. Miller, and they've got 10 to give, and that's what Jerry Tarkanian's doing right now. He's going to make Miller work against two fresh people. On Fury in, and makes the 15-footer. Led this club in scoring as a freshman. Had to sit out in 89 due to some personal problems, but has come back well since then. Johnson working on Roosevelt. And a foul called on Arkansas. One of the things that's so difficult in guarding Larry Johnson is that he has great moves with the pivot. And as you saw right there, he gets a man up in the air, and he's got all that power and all that body to keep his man away, and then those great pivot moves that he uses, almost hard to stop him down there without committing the foul. Let's watch now Arkansas with Miller on the bench. And they'll go inside with uh, Roosevelt Wallace and Isaiah Morris as he returns. What I would expect we'd see during this period of time is UNLV to get their break going really well. 
and look for Anderson Hunt to pull up and take a three off the break. How did you like the sedate way that UNLV came out for the starting lineups? Well, I like a lot of things about this team, Jim. We watched them practice yesterday. They've got great camaraderie between this team. There's no hot dog in them at all. They all pull together. Man to man. Wallace, somebody blew an assignment. He was wide open. Right, missed assignment. Look at that snap pass to Hunt. He was ready for the three. Murray knew where he was. Good move. Auburn back out to Anthony. Good save. And Spencer a little shaky with his ball handling. There's a three. Air ball by Hunt. But off the hands of Morris. And a timeout. Timeout on the floor. Now Vegas has taken the lead. UNLV with a two-point lead nearing the midway point first half. Jim Nance along with Billy Packer. Pat O'Brien coming up at the half. But Leslie Bissler joins us right now with a report. Leslie? Jim, in the last timeout, Jerry Tarkanian told his team to tell him if anyone gets tired not to rush their shots and for the centers to look for the high-low. On the opposite end, Nolan Richardson told his team they've got to stop the fast break. We'll look for it, Jim. All right, Leslie. Both teams shooting over 60%. The, the biggest difference in the statistical categories would be rebounding where Vegas holds a 9-3 to three edge. And... That's been a real shortcoming for Arkansas, Billy, it, rebounding. It has, Jim. You don't see the number two team in the nation very often being a team that on the year is being out-rebounded. The high-low post is to get Larry Johnson open, and there was a case. Another great block. That time by Morris. Surprised Johnson that he was there on the weak side. Anthony bats it out of bounds. Oliver Miller will come in now. They'll take out Wallace. We have some wide bodies in this game, regardless of the size in terms of height. But Wallace is, looks like a you know, a defensive linebacker. Bowers could be a defensive uh, back. Oliver, Oliver Miller yeah. could be whatever he wanted to be. And Larry Johnson may be the <laughs> thickest player in college basketball. Spencer on the block. Fury gets it back. Gets the pass underneath. Miller slam dunk. And Spencer's got to protect home base first before he takes off on the break. Game is tied. 11 minutes to go, first half. Anthony on the jumper. Too strong. Rebound underneath Johnson. He'll lay it in. He's the top scorer for the running Rebels. 23 a game. Quickly at the other end. A steal by Spencer. Will Hunt dunk it? Yes. And Jim, this is what I see unfolding. It, and that's the fact that the defensive balance is not there. Anytime Mayberry drives, Vegas is sending two men long. Another turnover. Bowers threw it away. And Morris was cutting to the basket. Todd Day returns to the lineup for the Razorbacks. Later today, LSU and Duke. You know, Duke in non-ACC games at home, Billy, has won 63 in a row. As they'll challenge Shaquille O'Neal. And then same-day coverage of the Bush Clash. And an Olympic Winterfest. Big lineup for you this afternoon on CBS Sports. Stay with us. Of course, Shaquille O'Neal doesn't play very well on the road. Only had 38 points and 17 <laughs> rebounds on the road no. against Georgia the other day. Not well at all. No. Straight, hard-nosed man-to-man. Illegal screen by Spencer. Got away with it. Hoffman throws it away. Sixth turnover on the running Rebels. I'm really shocked at the fact that Vegas cannot get the ball to Larry Johnson in the low post. Right now, he's being guarded by... Rod Hurry, who has no chance to handle him down low. Day got a screen for a moment, so Johnson makes the switch. Miller is there for the offensive rebound. Spencer the outlet man, but he gets rid of it wisely in a hurry. Good double team. Anthony finds Augman on the baseline. That's three dunks in the first half for Augman alone. And another errant pass by the Razorbacks. But that's the way they play, Jim. They're going to force that ball up to court on all, all occasions, normally wearing the other club down. But Vegas is in excellent shape, and they're deep, so I don't believe that's going to be a factor in this game. Here's a guy that gives them more depth at UNLV, Everett Gray. He brings nine points off the bench for Coach Tarkanian. In less than 20 minutes of play in a game. Here he'll have a chance. 
Oh, as he goes up for the dunk, Miller takes a piece of the arm. Two. Two on Miller now. Team foul number five. What happens to a great shot blocker is most people tried to avoid him. What's what's taking place right now in the case of Augman, Spencer, Johnson, and that time Gray, they're taking the ball right to Miller, which doesn't give him the room to maneuver as a shot blocker. Consequently, he's picking up the fouls. Right. One more, and Nolan Richardson's going to have to put him down for the remainder of the half. Here's another basketball player with a baseball background. He was a third-round pick of the Astros in 87 was Everett Gray. Makes one of two. Still trying to figure out the nickname for Bowers, how it works. They call him Truck at 5'11". Well, he was a great running back as a junior high school football player. That's where he got the nickname. Called on Gray. Watch Miller go up aggressively. Again, the good pick and roll move. Curry doing a nice job because Spencer had to come over to, to help out. And the key to that, again, is that Vegas has had him a hard time with the pick and roll maneuvers. Perfect timing. Spencer had to commit. When, uh, comes back in for UNLV. Miller will shoot a free throw. Here's here's the least likely guy on campus to, that needs a bodyguard. But how does he come to Barnhill today? He's got two policemen. One on each side. He looked like Frank <laughs> Royals after a winning football game. <laughs> Not a good pass by Larry oh, Johnson. Great what a save. save by Anthony. And Spencer wasn't ready for it. Miller snaps it today. Dunk time. Now what's happening? Vegas has got themselves a problem in their alignment. Spencer is too often in a position to be the ball handler in the middle, and he's not capable. Good run by a pressing team. The dunk ties it. Day is fouled as he was about to pass it back out high to Mayberry. Spencer's first, team foul number six. And we see Spencer right there, and it's really not his fault. He's in a position that he does not play well. So when you're passing to somebody, you've got to remember who he is, and he got caught in the open court area right there. This young man's going to be an outstanding player. He's going to have to work on his footwork, but right now this game is kind of getting by him right in, re in regard to the technicalities of the way Arkansas is playing. Ackles is back in for UNLV. Day was disappointed. He wanted free throws, but they brought it inbounds underneath. And on the miss three and the rebound fight, Gray is called again. That's his second. And now they're in the bonus at the one-on-one -on -one with the seventh team foul. Jim, what happened right there is that Gray has to understand as a weak side rebounder, he's got to block out first before going for the ball. He just released to the ball, allowed Hurry to come right over his side. Gray had a streak of 22 straight from the foul line this year. The best free throw shooter on the club. This is the man who really opened up the floodgates in the recruiting area of Memphis for the Razorbacks. He was Nolan Richardson's first big time recruit here. Mr. Basketball in Tennessee. Hogman coming in from the wing. Oh, he missed the lay in. Too strong. But underneath on the follow, Gray is fouled. Hogman really put a move on Oliver Miller. The problem that time, he had four hands on the ball. Unfortunately for Vegas, they were all their own. First on Hury. Foul was on Hury. Sixth team foul. And at the conclusion of this game, Billy and I will select a Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. And in their honor, Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each school. Jim, one of the things that makes Stacy Ogman, in my opinion, maybe the most valuable player in the United States, is he is now in the backcourt. So no matter where you put him, he can guard any one of four positions. He'll probably be on Mayberry now, shifting up on over from playing against Day. So a different matchup. Missing them both. One of four from the line for Gray. There is Stacy Ogman on Mayberry. That's a turnover. Walking on Todd Day as he was going up for the three. He saw Ackles in his face. 
Well, George Ackles can move out just as David Butler did last year, move out on the perimeter and really guard somebody. Anderson Hunt, who was the most valuable player at the Final Four, he is back in. Gray sits. Hunt, to me, is always the forgotten guy on this team. MVP of the Final Four was the MVP of the matchup against Arkansas last year when he had uh, 28 against him. Greg Anthony wide open here. They got it over to him. Hits the side of the backboard, and now it's a two-on-one. Day will shoot it over Hunt. Soft rebound comes back today, missing the short one. There's a principle of verticality, a very well-played situation by the defense and by the referee not to call a foul. Blocked by Miller. Day has it. Three on one. Lobbing it to Hury. Four-point Arkansas lead. Hury off the bench with six. You notice when Miller blocks a shot, how he keeps it in play. Probably does that better than anybody I've seen in the college level. Not a good pass. What a catch. Ackles somehow came down with it. Now Miller today. What a pass. That's the largest lead of the season on UNLV. A six-point lead. And a timeout called by the running Rebels. Hard Hill Arena in Fayetteville going crazy as UNLV trails by six. That's the largest deficit of the season for the Running Rebels. Arkansas has scored 11 unanswered points. Field goal percentage over 60% for Arkansas. And Oliver Miller, nine points, three blocks, and three rebounds, and a great assist leading into that timeout as he snapped it all the way down court to Todd Day. Well, Jim, we've seen Billy Tubbs' clubs at Oklahoma throw the baseball pass as well as anybody as a team, but we're seeing out here a great example of baseball passes length of court by Larry Johnson and Oliver Miller. Change back in his zone, one time down after a timeout. Johnson starting to try to use that left hand. They need to go in more inside. Loose ball comes to Mayberry. Into the corner to Bowers. Here comes Day. Nobody's got him. Floating free for a three. There it is. Too strong. Rebound by Johnson. And a three on two. Augment. Boy, he altered that shot in the air. Now, what, what's happening? As you can see, anytime Johnson can, and Eccles can control the boards, they're sending three out on the break. Arkansas only has two back. Vegas goes zone. These teams mirror each other an awful lot in what they try to do in practice and in their their defensive structure in the game. Bowers, three-point shot. Fury coming in for the rebound, crashing, but no rebound. It comes to Johnson. Another outlet to Augman. In the corner is Hunt for a three. In and out. And Bowers almost had it. Ackles with oh, a what shot a push. Foot move. Yep. Todd Day can't believe it. Well, Bowers did push Stacy Augman. There was no question about it. Bowers, his first team foul number seven. This is the all-time uh, record for scoring margin or margin of victory in UCLA and that team back in 72, 30.3. And UNLV is almost, well, they're two points ahead of the pace right now, Billy. And you have to remember a couple of things about those margins. Back in those days, there was no shot clock, so therefore teams could hold the ball. So you have to give UCLA some incredible right. credit then. And they, there was no three-point shot as well. So every game now has to be played at this type of pace. So I would say that because of the rule change, that uh, statistic probably doesn't mean as much as it should. Clyde Fletcher is in for Arkansas, his first appearance. Zone defense now, 2-3. Blocked from behind, but they call it a foul. They say Anthony got him on the top of the head. Gives a little slap. Now in this particular defense, Mayberry, primarily ball handler, is capable of the three, so is Bowers and Hury. So they do have three point three three-point shooters, even though Todd Day's not on the floor. Mayberry with a, a an assist to turnover ratio on the season of better than three to one, but in which which is outstanding. I mean that's that would in some years lead the nation in that category. But how about Greg Anthony this year? 
six to six one. To one. Chris Corsiani leading the nation in assists. Mayberry not far behind. But they're not giving Hunt anything outside at the three. He's open now. Got it back over to him. And the perfect three by Hunt. Against the zone. And what was smart about Anderson Hunt there, he stayed in position, realizing the zone was moving away from him. Now the 1-1-3 defense by UNLV. First time they've shown it today. Bowers penetrates past Hunt. And Larry right Johnson. Now, Johnson sees a man up ahead. It's Hunt. Mayberry shakes him out. And, oh, and he still finds a way to get it down. And it may be intentional. Should be, Billy. Yep. And, but I don't think they're going to get the call. It should be intentional with two. He tackled him. How about the pass, though? We talked about the baseball pass. Larry Johnson with a flick of the wrist. Throws it about 60 feet. No question it has to be intentional. Shot goes. Larry Johnson just fired that ball on a line. He's thrown more strikes today than Walter Johnson ever did. <laughs> Hunt misses the opportunity for a three-point play. However, UNLV's back ahead by one. This is a team that has not trailed at halftime since last year's Final Four when Georgia Tech led them by seven in Denver at the half. Remember, at Vegas, though, Arkansas last year in the regular season led by four at halftime. They got just enough of the. In that particular case, Anthony coming from behind. It's so difficult as a jump shooter, knowing that guy's chasing you from behind. You feel he's going to get a piece of the arm. Foul called on Fury. Well, Leslie Visser talked about it in the pregame show, and on the pants of uh, the UNLV players, they're wearing a an extra patch. Of, a patch to commemorate their friends from the Nevis Air Force Base in Las Vegas. That's the uh, base where the stealth bomber comes out of. You know, the way Larry Johnson hesitates, uh, and you're going to get a free shot out of this, and I'll explain to you why. Larry Johnson has a double motion here on the foul shot, and what happens, they started to move in the lane as Johnson put his first move on. Now watch, here goes the first move, then he has the second move, and Day went in on the first move, giving Larry Johnson another opportunity on that one and one. Johnson's got a big smile on his face. He's just laughing about that hitch move he has. It's like an old Harlem Globetrotter play. Remember when the... Yeah, used yeah. To, used to throw it at the basket and then still hold it in the hand. Yeah, Everybody right. went in the lane. There it is. They're in the lane again. Didn't call it that nope. time, Billy. Augman chases it down for the rebound. Anthony going to Augman. Johnson. Let's see. They called him for it. Traveling on Larry Johnson. Larry Johnson needs a little bit more room in there to operate because with, when Oliver Miller was in the game, he had to alter his shot. And that time, a very good job by Wallace. You want to be stays in the zone. Day, Day is calling for the alley-oop, but Murray takes the three and makes it his second of the game. Hunts out for the three-point shot. And look at Bowers reach in, knock the ball loose. They thought it was off the foot of Augman. But they're saying a foul on Bowers, his second. Team foul number 10. So we'll call it the double bonus, the two free throw shooting situation. Next Sunday on CBS Sports, we'll have the Daytona 500 for you, starting at 12 Eastern time. By the way, uh, Davey Allison has the pole position for that race you'll see next Sunday. Did it surprise you, Billy, when Augman and Johnson decided to come back this year? At that time, it looked like they would not be eligible for the tournament. Well, they had a lot of options. You know, they could have gone pro. The other thing they could have done, they could have transferred out and played for some other school. But they have tremendous loyalty and devotion to, uh, as I mentioned at the top of the show, to Jerry Tarkanian and their school. So I applaud them. Wallace blocked by Johnson. Gets it back. And the tip-in try by Morris. Ackles gets it for UNLV. Four minutes remaining in the first half. UNLV with a one-point lead. Anderson Tough shot. Hunt. Tough shot. Yeah. He wasn't ready. Had Bowers right in his face also. Here's the walk-on, Ernie Murray. 
You notice how Anderson Hunt is setting up over in that spot, but he's got to realize that Arkansas is playing him all the way for the three, maybe even pump fake, drive by, and look inside. They with a tough pass to Morris, and it's not out of bounds off UNLV. Got a timeout with UNLV coming back from six down to take a one-point lead. UNLV 42-41. Pat O'Brien's coming up at halftime. But let's check in with Pat right now. Pat? All right, uh, Jim, thank you. I've been studying the last few huddles uh, for the Arkansas, and the theme has been attack the ball, stop those long UNLV passes, and that's what they're going to try to do all afternoon. Uh, Coach Richardson said, you guys got any breath in your left? And uh, they feel that everybody is in pretty good shape. I just uh, talked to Big O, and I said, you're tired? He said, no way. Back to you guys. Now, they've been talking about this game since the since the turn of the new year. And it's been very difficult for Arkansas to stay focused on its Southwest Conference game, very nearly losing to Houston on Thursday night. Coming back to win that game in the late going. Day has himself placed all the way over the deep corner for his jump shot. Good job by Ackles to come all the way out from underneath and made the switch with Larry Johnson in the zone. the shot clock Morris not in time not in time no basket did not get it off in time the shot clock expired take away the go-ahead basket Murray applying pressure on Greg Anthony these teams really match up well don't they great guard play about the same size position so similar Bowers out there Hunt hasn't had anybody guard him like this all year Anthony gets the free basketball. Murray released early. He was looking for the snowbird basket at the other end. And there's a steal by Murray, working hard. Wallace didn't realize Day was behind him. And after a three-on-one opportunity, shuts down for him. They'll reset with Murray taking over the point spot with Mayberry on the bench. make a move past Augman driving the baseline Murray his third try for a three doesn't hit that one first time today three on two oh, on the other end wow. oh, yes. I thought that was over the basket <laughs> I thought it was over the the entire backboard he went up a good what are we gonna say Jim 18 inches easy yep. above the rim easy 18 And how about the fear of coming down? <laughs> Four dunks for uh, Augman in the first half. Zone has taken a little of the tempo away from Arkansas here, and now they couldn't have any luck on one side of the court and went to the other. Oh, that's, Wallace that's takes That's got to out. be intentional. It's the second time today. Wallace just ran into him, no intent whatsoever to play the ball. So right after Todd Day ties it again, you will see. Look, that, that's got, if that's not an intentional foul, then there's never been one in college basketball. You, you've got to call this. Now we're going to see the lob pass. I said 18 inches. I probably underestimated. That could have been two feet. Yep. But, Jim, on that call, the way these players are playing, you can't allow a fellow to come down and make that kind of almost tackle in the open court area. You've got to set a precedent there. I'm very surprised. Second time today that the call has not been made, and that one was an obvious one. So Augman will shoot two. Look at his numbers in the first half. It's already over his average. He averages 17. He now has 18. Well, Stacy was 9 for 11 against Michigan State, 9 for 12 against Rutgers, 9 for 12 against UAB. He has put some numbers up. 30 to go in the first half. So they stay in the zone. UNLV's played a lot more zone in this game than I anticipated, particularly when you consider the perimeter shooters that Arkansas has out there. Bowers three. Boy, this guy has really turned it around in the shooting department since last year. A career 40% shooter, now 53%. Zone press. Augman tries to beat it with a dribble. Is off the foot of Augman, and luckily Anthony picked up the loose ball. Spencer dumps it inside to Johnson. Oh, in and out. And Fury 
Has it knocked out of his hands? Out of bounds, Arkansas basketball. Larry Johnson just turned, realized he's supposed to put that one away down in low. He has not gotten out in track so far today on offense. And here's that 1-1-3 one, one, zone. Now watch the switch out front. Augman and Anthony will go ahead and cross after the first pass. They hold their ground as Arkansas looks like they just want to hold it for one. Now they'll run it down to yep. about 15, 20 seconds left on the game clock. That's as far as they can go with it. And you know what's so tough in the zone right now is that Arkansas has surrounded the zone with four excellent three-point shooters. Bowers, Mayberry, Day, and Yuri all can hit it from out there. They've really extended that zone. Must move it now. Five on the shot clock. And not a good oh. shot, but Mayberry makes it. Oh, an off-balance three. That was taken too early, but there's Augman alertly picking it up. Keeps it alive three times, four times. And the half is here for the first time since Denver. UNLV trails at the intermission. By the same margin they trailed Arkansas last year in Las Vegas. UNLV came back to win that game a year ago, 101-93. 12 lead changes in the first half, and the score at halftime, Arkansas 50, and Nevada Las Vegas 46. Pat O'Brien will be back with the Prudential at the half and a Gulf War update from CBS News after this message and a word from your local station. Let's see if they have it in them. Down four, UNLV has it to start the second half. This team tried to become the first repeat champion since UCLA 1972 and 73. And Arkansas starts in their 2-3 matchup zone. Ackles gets the generous roll, and it's a two-point lead for Arkansas. Good job by Ackles to fill in the middle of that zone, get that nice, easy jumper. Miller, a perfect four for four from the floor in the first half. Dumps it to Morris, turnaround, no go, and out of bounds off Day, who is blocked right into the official and takes him out also. Good job by Greg Anthony, and Anthony hurt his leg a little bit. That official really went down as Jimmy Burr. Of course, he did not make the call there. He's just trying to get himself back together again. A real tough competitor. You see, what, what happens right here? You see, Anthony goes ahead and sets the illegal screen. Burr gets hit by Todd Day and goes down. It's like he hurt his neck a little bit. I think he landed on the front row of the seats over here, Billy, against the footrest. See Todd Day crashing in beautifully on the boards, and there's that screen that should have been a foul on Anthony, not called. The reason's not called. Burr, of course, is laying on his back. Tough guy. Nice congratulations by Todd Day. He's up. And smiling. He said, I had position. I drew the charge. <laughs> well, he, he's lucky that it was Day who hit him. Yeah, you had about 185 yeah. pounds and not a Larry Johnson or an Oliver Miller. Mm -hmm. and there we see they stay in the 2-3 zone now with Miller in the middle. Anderson Hunt out here looking for something. Great bounce pass. And Larry Johnson ties it at 50. Well, what a pass. And a steal by Anthony. He leaps into the air, bats it down, and is able to retrieve it. Good come around. Oh, what a pass there. Did you see what Augman, Augman had in mind? Yep, but Johnson saved it also. Stacy Augman had in mind to not only save it, but to make a pass with a left hand. I think it even caught Johnson by surprise. Well, this may catch you by surprise. If I had to pick one player in the United States in terms of his versatility and what he can mean to a basketball team to win a game, and I had to make that choice between Larry Johnson and Stacy Ogman. I'd have to go with this fellow right here because of his versatility to be able to do so many different things. Morris was called for the foul. That's his first. That doesn't surprise me, the versatility. And, and not to take anything away from Larry Johnson either because, of course, he's very versatile as well. But Stacy just can guard so many different people. First six points of the second half to the running Rebels. 
Mayberry has it swatted away, and here comes a three-on-one for the run and rubble. I'm Nolan Richardson, and they score. I go timeout right here because the run is on that he can't afford to let happen, even on his home floor. Eight in a row for Vegas, and a four-point lead. Hasn't used any. Day, the long three, front of the rim, Augment. Tries to get the break going. Got Johnson on a lob. They've got Hunt in the corner. It's a three. <laughs> Ackles pulls it down. Into Ackles. Oh, right over Miller. And that's 10, the first 10 of the second half for UNLV. Now the timeout is called by Arkansas. Well, Billy, we talked about the Georgia Tech game last year at the Final Four. Same kind of start to the second half for Vegas here. UNLV storms out of the locker room to start the second half. Let's get a report from Pat O'Brien. Thanks, Jim. Last Arkansas huddle. No strategy talk. Just a simple speech from Nolan Richardson said, you came out dragging, and let's go back to work. As simple as that. Let's go back to you. All right, Pat. And he told us yesterday at practice, Nolan Richardson did, that he has stressed to his team that basketball, and particularly in this game, it's going to be a battle of streaks. We're going to have some streaks go against us. So be prepared for it. But we're going to have them come right back our way at some point also. Set their offense up a little bit higher now. Trying to make sure they get a good shot off a set play here, and they've got one. Miller has it right off the glass. Hat position on Apples. There's one of those excellent timeouts by a coach. Get his team settled down. Couldn't afford the run. Jury on Johnson. They've got to get Johnson free for a shot inside. He's got a weaker player playing on him physically, and they just can't get him the ball. Well, trying to post him up. And we got a whistle. The yep. foul called him Bowers. All right, the double team by Bowers. The problem was that Augman, with his size at six foot eight, maybe even a little bit bigger, was able to play over his head. That's the third on Bowers. Or truck, if you will. Now we've got a switch. Anthony driving on Miller. Underneath there is Johnson. Right below the hoop. He tips it in off his own miss. See, Hury not quite strong enough, as Morris is, to go ahead and keep a body on Larry Johnson. And they are going man to man. Lob available. Here comes Stacy Ogman. Did a good job from the weak side to give Ackles all the help he needed. They underestimate Ackles' jumping ability. Hunt with the three. Knocked out of bounds. And wait a minute. They're going to say it belongs to UNLV. Well, Ackles had a great job coming in from the outside. Nobody blocking him out. This young fellow really gets up in the air. By the time the season's over, be a more dangerous center than was David Butler last year. Another dish. Yep, drops it into Johnson off the back of the rim, and another yep. basket for Johnson. Richardson's going to have to make a change here. Fury cannot handle him, and here comes Morris into the game. Lee Mayberry in and out. Johnson with the rebound. Starts at three on two. Coming down the wing is Hunt. Augman on the follow. So Stacy Augman made a great shot there. The shot of the year so far is the one that he made against Cal State Santa Barbara. On one knee, made a shot from about 12 feet when he had nobody to pass to. Billy, this is suddenly a 10-point lead for oh, UNLV. Oh, another great job by Ackles. There was no backside help that time. He just got off the floor quickly. Now they're able to bring in Morris on the dead ball situation for Hury. Now, that was something that had to take place because Fury just not strong enough to guard Larry Johnson down the low post. Morris had played Johnson in junior college when his club beat Odessa. He played him to a standstill, 16 each. Day rattles home a three. You notice also that Arkansas has not, because they can't score, they haven't been able to install their press in the second half. And that takes away a big part of their game. Greg Anthony can't believe it. He doesn't stop smiling, though, does he? We talked about that young man who's given up his scholarship to take on his business interests, and I made a comment and talked to him about it yesterday. I don't believe that that's something that should be allowed under NCAA rules, not to take anything away from him, but you can't afford to have guys giving up scholarships, taking jobs. Can you imagine some of the jobs that could be made available? Well, that's if you really wanted to take advantage exactly. of that. Exactly. It's a loophole that has to be closed immediately. 
Miller. Miller still perfect from the floor. He has 13. Please. 25 for Augment. His career high is 34. Set against Utah State last week. He may be in line to break that today. Here's Bowers. I'm not sure what he's doing, but he gets it in the middle. Strong hands. And that time, Stacy Augment left no, let Day go because he thought he could make the steal. That won't happen often. He'll stick right on him. You don't realize the ball is coming in bounds. Johnson almost stole it. Now reaching around, thought he had the block, but he fouled Morris. That's number two on LJ. Team foul number one of the second half. Well, UNLV, we keep talking about their place in history, and they have to establish that today, of course. They have to maintain the unbeaten record to, the to uh, have the shot at joining these undefeated champions. The last was Indiana in 1976. There have been seven in all, four times accomplished by Coach Wooden at UCLA. They have a shot. They've had uh, 16 undefeated teams, and only seven have become national champions. The last two undefeated teams in regular season basketball. Jim, do you have an idea who they are? Well, I know the last one was uh, Larry Bird in Indiana oh, State in 79. Now, see, everybody says that. In the same year, there was another team that was undefeated in regular season. 79. Everybody remembers Bird. That, this is an unfair question. Well, uh, Alcorn State. Can you oh, imagine that's that? Cool. That's a tough question. And I did the Bird game against Arkansas, Indiana State, Arkansas, one of the great regional finals of all time. Bob Heaton hit that shot for the win. Here's Augman now, mounting his total to 27. Yeah, that was the that was the Midwest final, Indiana State, ranked number one against Arkansas. And Heaton hit it at the end. All right, game came down the wire. It was Sidney Moncrief guarding Larry Bird. Figured Bird was going to touch it instead of it. Bob Heaton hit the shot. Mayberry makes that one. Augman is so hot, he takes it and <laughs> makes it again. He's pulled up, hit the jumper, playing great defense on day. And now he's talking to the Arkansas bench as well. He's been talking to Day throughout this game. Day puts up an off-balance shot, running with it. And now Johnson on the rebound. They've got Hunt leaving early. Now the problem for Nolan Richardson, he's already called one timeout. His team's in serious trouble now. A slam dunk by Johnson. The basket counts what you can sense right here Jim is the fact that that Vegas is now starting to get an emotional edge on Arkansas you can see some pieces starting to fall apart Larry Johnson buries that one not only buried it he almost took the rim off now Bowers did the right thing he got out of his way that is four however on Bowers and he will sit down Larry Johnson looks like you can see you know the little difference in the look of these players right now you can see the strain starting to come on some Arkansas faces and a relaxed nature in UNLV already has his double double it's kind of like the look on Sugar Ray Leonard's face as the fight wore on last night realizing he had come to the end of the road and I'm not burying Arkansas at this point in the game but there has been a change the last couple of minutes. Mayberry, three-point shot, way short. Spencer with the rebound. Good pass to Hunt. He's out ahead of everyone. His second dunk of the game, and it's a 12-point lead, largest lead of the game for UNLV. Time now for them to go ahead and get Mayberry and Oliver Miller handling the ball most of the time. Try to get Oliver Miller the ball. He's got Spencer on him. Morris. Tough shot. Throws it with one hand. And again, Hunt leaving early. Mayberry comes in on him, missing the layup. Rebound by Ernie Murray. Good job by Mayberry. But going to this man-to-man -to -man and shut all that perimeter shooting down. Now he put it on the floor. He won't stop Hunt this time. Fury coming down, but Hunt scores again. 14-point lead for That's Vegas. Time for another timeout for Nolan. I mean, he's got to pull this club down. Mayberry is exhausted. The team is letting it fall apart on him. Great run by UNLV. Billy, they have outscored. Arkansas 29 to 11 here in the second half. Back at the barn and UNLV exploding to a 14-point lead. Let's check in with Leslie Visser. 
Jim, during the last time out, Jerry Tarkanian cautioned his troops not to get beaten off the dribble. He expects Arkansas to go one on one. On the other end, Nolan Richardson told his team he wants more shooting from Mayberry, more rebounding from Wallace, and do something with Stacey Osmond. Back to you guys. Yeah, they've got to do something with the rebounds also. In the second half, 11 to 1, UNLV on the on the boards as Spencer comes in, denies, and knocks it out of bounds. A subtle move by Jerry Tarkanian, given Stacy Ogden with this tremendous run they're having a little rest right here. So he's got Gray now substituting. But they had to call the timeout as the five count was about to come on them. And that leaves them with no timeouts. Oh, with 12 minutes left in the game, they had to burn their final one. Nance and Billy Packer from Fayetteville in the natural state. And UNLV, as we summarize, with a 14-point lead, the 29 to 11 edge in this half, and Ogden moving in on career numbers for him. Oliver Miller, six for six from the floor, gave Ogden a chance to get back in the game. Mayberry takes a step. Good shot by Mayberry. <laughs> Foul on Mayberry, a little over aggressive. His third. And team foul number three. He has committed today six turnovers as Mayberry. He averages less than two per game. And what he expected there, he expected Anthony to pivot and roll away from him and then try to steal from behind. Instead, Greg Anthony turned right back into his face. It was a real smart move. Ogden posting up on day. Didn't realize Miller was behind him. Miller pulls down the rebound, but no! does not get the outlet pass to Murray. It's taken away by Hunt. Miller gets another one. Miller blocks it. Oh, oh, oh. There was a collision. Wallace and Johnson. And Wallace came out the winner. That won't happen often in the college level. Oliver Miller, a great shot blocker. The way he keeps that ball alive. He has six blocks, Billy, today. Mayberry forcing it a bit. Miller now seven for seven from the floor. Now what's happening right now with those timeouts that they've used, they've got a chance to get back in focus. Nolan Richardson's done a good job with his club. Augman able to drop it in to Johnson and traveling on UNLV. Larry Johnson was just waiting to get some space there to put it in. I didn't see the walk myself. He's a little upset with the call. Now Wallace and, and Larry Johnson getting into it. I'd hate to have to break that one up. They man to man. UNLV used a lot of zone in the first half. It got him in trouble with that perimeter shooting. Second half, it's been all man to man, right in your face defense. Oh, good step out. Great play by Spencer. Stepped out, then dropped back and got the steal. Three on one, Hunt. That was a sensational play by Spencer. Stepped out, nobody anticipated it. Just turned the ball over. Does another nice job stepping up. This time it'll be Greg Anthony's turn. Nope. Can't find the handle, but Johnson will finish it off. Two excellent plays by Spencer on the defensive end of the floor. First half, he had his problems. Here's Wallace taking the jumper. Rose about Wallace. Before the season's over, you have to see Wallace playing a lot more time. This club needs rebounding strength and bodies on the inside to help Oliver Miller out a little bit. And Wallace can put some points on the board. Spencer, oh, it looked like all ball. Oh. It is, <laughs> yes. Oliver Miller talked the official into that one. The, in, the initial inclination was foul. Well, they call it a tie-up situation. Yep. The possession arrow remained on the UNLV side, so they'll inbound it, but Another great play by Miller. Jim, interesting. On Jerry Tarkanian's bench, he's got three fellows that are assistants, all of which were head coaches. Timmy Gergrich, who was at Pitt, Ron Adams at Fresno State, Ed Gordian, who was at Loyola Marymount. At halftime, only Adams and Gergrich talked about details of the game, one for offensive strategy, one for defense. Foul called on Spencer. Stay tuned for another top 20 NCAA basketball matchup. Shaquille O'Neal leads 19th ranked LSU into Durham to take on number six Duke. Followed by same day coverage of the Bush clash. 
from Daytona at 4.30. And Olympic Winterfest. Countdown to Albertville. That's all today on CBS. Good Yuri. try, baseline. Got right past Spencer and Ackles. Well, Spencer was concentrating so much on Miller, he wasn't ready. Hunt launching the high, arching three. Nolan Miller was coming right at him. That's some kind of concentration. Well, our friend and colleague, Mike Francesa, always likes to point out when Hunt start, starts knocking down those threes, the other team is in all kinds of trouble. There they are. We talked about that at the start of the show. You know, if they're better than two for five, they're, they're so tough. And he is breaking long as well. Good steal. Missouri almost had a piece of that. Yep. Got a piece of the arm, however. Well, Jim, what that does is when Anderson hunts out there, you can see what it has done to the defense of Arkansas. They have to go out and extend so far to protect against that, that play and also cross-court passing that it leaves the inside wide open. One of the reasons they're having such a difficult time off the boards as well. Anderson Hunt, of course, knowing that they have dominance on the board, is releasing on that break the minute the shot goes up. You, you talked about him in the Final Four last year. Had 20 and then 29 and MVP of the Final Four. That'll be a trivia question down the road somewhere when you consider all the great players that were on this team and say uh, who was the MVP. Hunt now has 23 as Bowers comes back in for Murray. Tough shot. A tough shot. Back to the rim. And a foul with the body was Apples. And it just goes to show you a good timing by day. We're at the barn on the Arkansas campus, Barn Hill Arena. Jim Nance and Billy Packer for the one against two showdown. Jim, when you look at this arena, you have to think of Eddie Sutton, the man that really brought big-time basketball here to Arkansas. A man who's doing the job at Oklahoma State could become the first man in the history of NCAA Division I to take four different teams to the NCAA tournament. At Creighton, of course, Arkansas, Kentucky, and now Oklahoma State. There's a steal. Bad pass. Anthony, clobbered by Day on the way up. Cross-court, lazy pass. Oak State lost last night, yes, but I know. moved into the top 25 for the first time this year. Well, it'd be hard to conceive, particularly with the balance in the Big Eight, for them not to go uh, into multiple teams in the NCAA tournament. Of course, Nebraska's the surprise there, and the young man from Nebraska, Clifford Scales, says in the years past, we couldn't wait until March just to catch UNLV on TV. Well, this year, <laughs> they'll be playing. They're going to be playing with them. Good job by Danny Nee. And Jim, I, I, I watched kind of in awe last night when you and Tark in the lobby start talking about matchups. So, you know, <laughs> you're like two basketball sickos. They're already talking about matchups. Who's going to be paired where? Who's going where? And he, I thought you were the most interested guy in the world in that, but I think Tark's right there with you. Love to speculate on those seedings. They trip momentarily, takes the turnaround. And Miller with the rebound to keep it for Arkansas. Arkansas, not that's Miller's first miss of the day. Arkansas just not getting the kind of shots they want. There's one you want. Good cross-court passing. Fury inside today. Basketball junkies trying to figure out who will be the one seeds. Everyone has UNLV and Arkansas as two of the one seeds. Got to think Ohio State will be another one. And then Indiana or Duke. Johnson double on the pump. way up. Yep. Double pump. That's the case of the strength. Great body control, too, for a man of that size. I can see Oliver Miller now starting to really wear down physically. He's having a hard time getting up and down the court. That ball was tipped and it somehow bounced off the glass and in. See, Oliver Miller is just worn out. He can't get to the spots anymore. And Nolan Richardson has no timeouts. Of course, being this far down, he's got to keep him in the game, but his team is very tired. Hunt just ran in to Mayberry. Augman with the basket goes over 30. He has 31. And we were talking about seedings. How about rankings for the week going in? UNLV, of course, one and two uh, with Arkansas. Ohio State, three. How will it change uh, if UNLV holds on the win? You think Arkansas will drop any worse than number three? I wouldn't think so, Jim. There's the rest of the top ten. Got an official timeout on the floor with eight minutes left and a 16-point lead for UNLV. CBS Sports coverage of the road to the Final Four is sponsored by Mercedes-Benz, engineered like no other car in the world.
UPS now offering 10.30 a.m. guaranteed overnight air delivery. And by the American Express card. Membership has its privileges. All the great athletes in this building today, perhaps the greatest athlete or one of them of all time, is sitting on the end of UNLV's bench, Walter Payton. And why the Rebels? Why are you such a big fan of the Rebels? You know, I've, I've been a fan of the Rebels for about nine and a half years. And, uh, you liked it when they were losing. I, that's right. And because of the style they played, they were very aggressive. They had a lot of fun. And uh, just like with the Chicago Bears, we had a losing season when I first started. I stayed with it. We ended up winning the Super Bowl. And the same thing happened with these guys. They had the center, Cinderella season last year. Did you talk to him before this game? I know you gave him a pep speech before uh, the final last year. Yes, I, uh, I had breakfast with him this morning, and I gave him a talk. and told him, hey, just calm down, play um, within yourself. Don't let the crowd take you out of what you do best. Yes or no? Do you miss football? Uh, I missed uh, being around the players, the camaraderie. I don't miss all the bumps and bruises. We miss you. Thank you, Walter. Back to you guys. All right, Pat. You know, there's another great athlete here today, and the super center fielder for the Pittsburgh Pirates, Andy Van Slyke, one of the biggest hoop fans you'll ever find. He's here. And the Arkansas students made a mistake. They had a home run hitting contest yesterday down yeah. here in the field. Andy kind of wandered in with his blue jeans on. I said, hey, let me try that. Mind if I take a few swings? Uh, yeah, four out of five right out of there. 20 points for Larry Johnson. Boy, that was a quiet 20, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. 21 now and an 18-point lead. And Oliver Miller stayed in the game. He really needed that timeout. He only averages 24 minutes a game on the year, so he's getting an awful lot of continuous uh, play here today and having to go up against two centers, it's caused him to, to really be fatigued. There was an example. Yep, didn't jump high. Exactly. This time this jump also. Ackles swats it out to Anthony. Over to Hunt. Here comes Ackles trailing. Score it and a foul. Now, you can see Ackles was able to go up higher than Miller tap the ball out and then Ackles ran 90 feet down the floor and makes the shot while Oliver Miller just took about two steps and said hey this has been too tough for me right here now there you can see Ackles coming down the floor he's been able to be spelled today by Spencer and those two players as we said at the top of the show KOO and 10 to give has really been a big advantage for UNLV in this game Arlen Bowers fouls out on that hack, I'm really impressed by Ackles, a uh, man who did not take up basketball until his junior year in high school. He was a soccer goalie. But how, many, that. how many times have we heard about big men that played soccer at a young age to having those quick feet? <laughs> Miller follows his own miss with a little tip in. You think of Akeem Olajuwon, right. Patrick Ewing started out playing soccer also. Was it Michael Thompson, also a, a soccer player? Right. The Bahamas. Yep. Good job by Ackles to come out. He's done that all day today. Come out and receive the ball, whether it be against the press or in the half court, creating a passing lane. Now they just bring it out high to Ogden. 20 on the shot clock. Oh, what a pass. Bouncing it inside. Johnson <laughs> reverse. What a pass by Stacy Ogman. 6'8", sat right down on the floor, threw the bounce right between everybody. Mayberry with a three, short again. And Ogman with a steal. Should we just go ahead and give him the Chevy MVP check right now? Here's Johnson trailing, scoring, and 25 now for Johnson. And there again, the unselfish nature of this club. A four-on-two break. This game has been blown over by UNLV. Terrific play on their part. Fury traveled as he made the move in the lane. LSU and Duke is coming up next. And, you know, the last non-conference team to beat Las Vegas was LSU last year on Super Sunday. It was a 107-105 shootout in Baton Rouge. LSU beat the running Rebels. And today, Shaq and company will take on Duke. Do you think these are final four teams? I think well, Duke could be. Two uh, All-American players. I'm going to throw one out at Shaquille O'Neal. He is really Shaquille, which is little one, Rashawn, which is warrior, O'Neal, which is his mother's surname. Mm -hmm. So the little the little one is a warrior. Believe me, people who watch that game today will see that he certainly is. One of the truly gifted big men that have come into college basketball in a long, long time. On his back, Augman gets it to Johnson. Back out to Ackles. This team's starting to have fun now. They've been having fun really throughout, but... Now what we have right now is 
And, and Jim, we said at the top of the show, you know, you have a, ch a team that has a chance to become one of the great ones, but they've got to prove that along the steps of the way this year. And in my opinion, they showed against the Soviets. That was the first sign when they opened it up. I, I thought they really showed a sign of greatness the way they played Princeton and took them out of their very patented offense. They showed it here again today in terms of coming on a court like this one and just taking a team right out of their game plan. This club does have that potential to border on one of the great ones that's ever played. And really, the only roadblock on the way to the NCAA tournament appears to be February 25th at New Mexico State in Las Cruces. Neil McCarthy has his team. Took them last year. Yep, yep, last year to the tournament, but they're back ranked again. And the only time Jerry Tarkanian has not won the regular season outright was last year, 16-2 and two in his league, and then he ends yep. up winning the national championship. It's amazing. Of course, tied to the championship. With New Mexico State. And you start talking about Tark and some of these records that have become almost mind-boggling that he's assembled as a coach, both as in junior college and, of course, on the college level. I think one of the I, one that will never be broken was, with, was that Long Beach and was 65 and 0 at home. <laughs> Bad place to schedule a game. Call a, call a foul on uh, Larry Johnson. And good job. You can see Greg Anthony right away calling all his players in saying, hey, look, we've played a great game here today. Let's go out in fine style. All right, uh, Master, I've got a, a trivia question for you. Ready for this? Well, I'm up uh, one we've even today, all uh, uh, state. All right, we're, yeah, okay, you lead one another. All right, we've loaded up the Chiron for this one also. Yeah. What CBS analyst, non-basketball analyst, one time played basketball under Jerry Tarkinian? At Vegas? No, I didn't say at Vegas. All right, I'm going to give you the, the list. Nobody ever played for him at Vegas. I know the answer to that. All right, which one played for Tark? Gary McCord, our golf with commentator. Jim Cottle in baseball. Irv Cross, I know, I know the answer Randy already. Cross, or Mary Carrillo? I know the answer already. Okay. The, the guy number one, Gary McCord. And you know what? <laughs> yeah. He got kicked off the team. You know why? He was hitting nine iron shots from half court and didn't even really realize what sport he was playing. <laughs> oh, a block on the way up. No, they say goaltending on Ackles. I was talking to Gary last week at Pebble Beach. He said, yeah. you should have seen me dunk. Yeah, well, I told Tark him, if you would have dunked a little more often on the putting service, you may have won a few times on the PGA Tour. Now the fans who have been taken out of this game in the second half, trying to bring their club back. 5.30 to go, not much chance of that. Especially with no timeouts, Billy. Correct. They go to their zone press, which they haven't had a chance to use today. And one of the reasons why they weren't scoring at the start of the second half and never could get in a position to set up the press. You did say McCord was at Riverside City. Riverside, College. Riverside. Yep. I bet you Tark doesn't remember him. I talked to him about it a little bit. He said, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure he did. Oh, that should be offensive goaltending. Day tipped it in, but he'll score it. Well, nice job by the officials just to let that one go. Johnson comes back up. I see the difference when Johnson comes back up against the press to handle the ball as opposed to what Spencer did in the first half. He's got such great hands. And now a little delay game by UNLV, particularly to take this team and make them chase him a little bit. Use up some of the clock and salt away what has been a very well-deserved victory on their part. Miller with the reach around foul. Daytona 500 next Sunday on CBS. Davey Allison and Ernie Irvin will have the pole positions for the Daytona 500. Starts at 12 noon Eastern. Davey Allison qualified for the pole with a speed of over 195 miles an hour. All right, here's the former soccer goalie netting the first free throw. Broken wrist kept him out of action last year. That's really a shame, too. You know, you don't get to be a part of the get that championship ring. Well, he might not have two on his fingers, but this club right now is going to take it's going to take an awful lot to keep one of them off his finger. And they reach the 100 point mark. Well, Ackle stepped out. He was looking for that pass for a pickoff, and they can afford to make some gambles here. They hit on the hand by Augman, I believe, his second. You know, you think about the day and Mayberry making the national team last year. Stacy Augman and Larry Johnson, neither one went to qualify for that team. And when you take also into consideration, Shaquille O'Neal did not try to qualify for that team. People wonder, why don't we win the gold medal every time, uh, even with our non-professional players? But you can imagine the team you could have assembled of guys that did not try out for the squad. 
Murray returns. I think Augman was just a little burned out from Probably. summer competition. You know, he played the, on the Olympic team. In exactly. 88. He's the only player in college basketball now still active that was on that Olympic team. He was the youngest member of that Olympic team. Any idea who you think will be the youngest U.S. Olympic member in 92? In 92, it'll be a professional player. I I'd say Shaquille O'Neal might have that chance. Uh, David Robinson, maybe. All right. Just a little game of keep away now. Spreading the floor very well. And here's where Stacey Aukman becomes valuable again because he can step outside. Ackles. And he turns around and hollers in the face of uh, Oliver Miller. And when you take Ackles, Stacy Augman, and Larry Johnson, there are three fellows that can go to that basket and just dunk on anybody. Miller has not had the massive presence he had in the first half. Well, he's worn down, Jim. Look at Anthony. That shows it right yeah. there. He just clicks right by mole. It, well, Oliver Miller had his back turned, didn't even realize he's coming. He's exhausted now. This was a team, an Arkansas team, which led 50 to 46 at halftime. And a three by day. Uh-oh, Day and Augment. Now, yep. now, here's the problem. He will be out of the game here. And long-time, oh. long-term ramifications. And here's where Tark has got to go to the bench. Augment is going to be out of this game. They've been drawn throughout the day. Yeah, if, and, and they're sitting got, him down. Now yep, he's got to be out. You got to... Now, I think that Jerry Tarkanian ought to clear his bench. His fellows right now are getting in a drawing conversation. I mean, that... With the fighting rule this year, yeah. Billy, you've got to be so Oh, careful. no question, because we've had, we have had two incidents this year in which players have been suspended for fighting. Now, what dictates a fight? The officials were very lenient on that particular play because there's no question that Stacey Augman threw the forearm shiver right in Todd Day's face. I'm surprised they're talking to each other. There it is. Now, that certainly could have been cause for a suspension. All they called was an intentional foul. And talk about the fighting rule now in college basketball, Billy. Well, the big change, and it certainly has had an effect on the college game, is that this year, the first time you're involved in a fight, it's a suspension. The second one, you're banned for the year. Suspended for one game. Exactly. But Augment did not get called for the fighting call in this game. They just ruled it an intentional foul. Hunt drives to the point. Miller has it taken out of his hands. He is worn out. Well, there, there was a lot of jawing early on in the ball game right now. And Stacey Augman and Day, of course, it's a great challenge. As Tark said before the show, he thinks they're the best defensive and offensive forwards in the country. There's Oliver Miller. And again, that shows the, the sign of fatigue which makes cowards of us all, and that's what's happened here in the second half. And Tark still reluctant to go to the bench. Well, the leads at 14 with three minutes remaining, and he wants a timeout. And, and you notice what he did right there. He asked his club, and he talking to Greg Anthony specifically, are you fellas okay? Are you going to keep your temperament? Otherwise, he was going to call a timeout and talk to him himself. The winningest percentage coach in college basketball history. And you know, Jim, as a member of the, the Basketball Hall of Fame board, so, I am embarrassed to say that he has never been nominated for the Basketball Hall of Fame. That's something that's got to change. You had some uh, some new candidates inducted this yep. week. Or Congratulations right to right. all of them. Of course, uh, from the college level, Bob Knight will be going in. Larry O'Brien. The late Larry O'Brien was uh, also voted in. Just spreading it. Arkansas chasing him man to man. Mark trying to use the clock. Augen in out for Augen. Yep. He's amazing how he can. You sneak those shots in. You don't think he's able to get them off, the shot. Day takes the three. Could have cut it to 10. And Johnson. Oh, 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 oh. Now, there's what I was talking about. That, this time, Day connected with the official. Now, now, see, you've got two great players in trouble of being, a chance of being suspended. The referees are being very lenient here. Both of them 
should come out of the game. If you're a coach, you cannot afford to have a player the likes of Day and Larry Johnson being suspended from the game. And Johnson said, I'm going to see you after the game. Now that's, now, that's unnecessary. There was a lot on the line for both of these teams. They'll probably see each other again. There's a good chance of that. Now, you know, a punch is a punch. It does not have to connect to be considered a fight. Now objects being thrown onto the floor. And watch Day on the tail end of this. Well, a little mismatch know, in the weight a, department. A punch, Much of connect here, Billy. A punch is a punch. You do not have to connect. As a matter of fact, on this rule, and, and it depends on the judgment of a, of a referee, but on this rule, you could even consider a fight being a verbal. And there's uh, Jody Sylvester took a piece, kind of like in the fight last night when the official took a piece of yeah, Sugar Ray Sugar hit him at, Ray the, end of the, at the end of the round. But really, I, I think now you're up by 13, 2.27 to go. It's time to clear the bench because you don't want to see a great attraction like this marred by guys who had so much going today, so much emotion, and now they're letting it get away from them. I think all the players are going to come out of this game healthy, but two of the officials may be out of action for a while. Now, Tarkanian is talking now. We could have a situation where the officials may be talking about a suspension situation. Nolan Richardson wisely comes down with Tarkanian to talk about it. Billy, one, this was taking place at the opposite end of the court. The UNLV bench started to jump up, and I was watching Tarkanian. He immediately got to his feet and said, stop right here. That's, a, that's automatic, and that's one of the things the rule has done well also, Jim, is the fact that it has really cleared up bench decorum in these altercation situations. Mentioned the UNLV coaching staff with Keith Starr in the uh, background, longtime uh, aide to UNLV. Also, there's the two coaches, both played college basketball themselves. We see that they and Johnson have been ejected. Now, what we have to find out is that for fighting? It, is it for fighting? Because they'll miss their next game if that's the case. Le uh, Leslie Visser has a report on that. Leslie. Down on the other end, Jerry Tarkani and the entire team is surrounding Johnson. He doesn't really seem upset. He thinks that just got away from him a little bit. He's actually laughing there, of course, thrilled with the blowout, and, and he kind of is shrugging his shoulders. Back to you. Well, word we have, it was a personal foul on Day, and Day and Johnson were ejected. Now, Larry Johnson talking to the official now explaining his side of the of the story but that's not going to work now the key here jim is if the ejection is going to be considered for fighting you'll see right there is a foul there's no question about it now when day came across with that punch i mean that has got to be called a fight yeah it's, you certainly haven't thrown him out of the game for uh for just the verbal exactly. altercation. it was much more than an, yep. what would be an intentional foul now the problem with that is, and as we pointed out in the rule, one game, one fight suspended for a game. Second fight suspended for the year. Really puts a lot of pressure on somebody to watch themselves if they get in that situation. Travis Bice in for the first time shooting the technical free throws. They called technicals also on uh, the day in Johnson. That went with the ejection. But Wayne Womack from Arizona suspended uh, for a game and fight with uh, with Cal's Ryan Drew. So, all right, Bice uh, shot the uh, personal fouls against uh, the free throws against Day. Now this is the technical. We'll have one more. But Travis Bice didn't see any action until he got an opportunity to go out there and shoot some free throws. So very cold sitting on that bench. Wasn't too successful. A technical foul shots. Now Hurry will go to the other end of the line to shoot the technicals for Arkansas. I've just spoken with Bill Rogers from the Sports Information Department at Arkansas. And he, he talked to Bob Donato, one of the officials, and... Donato has told him the players were not ejected for fighting. They were ejected for unsportsmanlike no, a very play. Lean, very lenient call on the part of the officials. And I, I like the suggestion by Fred Barricat earlier in the year when I went to the officials meeting, and he said that it should that ejection for fighting should be interpreted after watching films by supervisors of officials. And because of the severity of the penalty, unless it's so obvious, I think that'd be a pretty good idea. 
So the referees were lenient in this particular case. They will not miss the next game and have that uh, hanging over them the rest of the year with one more fight and they're out for the season. Picked out for unsportsmanlike play. Final two minutes here at Fayetteville. Everett Gray has come in for UNLV. And that uh, information now confirmed by the Arkansas coaches on the bench that uh, flanks us here. Foul called on Oliver Miller. Number four against uh, the Big O. And we'll set the lineup while we can on uh, CBS tonight. Of course, it starts with 60 minutes, followed by Murder, She Wrote, and the CBS Sunday movie, Lucy and Desi Before the Laughter. Well, there was a, a lot of laughter, I think, uh, going on throughout this game, but it's turned ugly in the end. And a lot of emotions that will carry into the tournament as these two could be on another collision course. It'll be interesting to see. Everyone, of course, figures uh, the West one seed will go to UNLV. Where will they place Arkansas, however, because Midwest plays West in the national semifinals. Would they send them to the Southeast and, or East to maybe have them not meet until the finals? I would think so. 2-3 zone, Vegas played man-to-man -man the second half. It was so effective for them. First time they've gone back into their zone just to try to occupy a little clock in the defensive end as well. 22 now for Oliver Miller. Good smart play by Stacy Ogman. No sense challenging Miller there. What do you think the long-term uh, hurt will be for Arkansas? Will this carry on with them the rest of the season? No, no I really don't think so, Jim. It's a very young team. They understand in the game the other night against Houston, they showed so well. Their first goal has got to, win, to be to win the conference, which they are in the driver's seat right now. Fury fouls uh, Greg Anthony. And I'll tell you another theory I don't believe in, and that's the theory that uh, the third time you play a team that you've beaten twice is more difficult to beat. I really feel that once you establish your superiority, as these young men did here today. To me, the guy is always looking around the corner for when is that run going to come again? I mean, could you imagine if the Duke team, as an example, were to face uh, UNLV? Don't tell me that the, that the loss would, would favor Duke. They'd have to remember that, that second half pounding they received uh, in Denver last year. Totaled a 30-point win in Denver. Strangely enough, UNLV had three wins in the tournament last year by that identical mark of 30 points. They have a 30-game win streak. Barry Tarkanian's 30th year as a coach. So 30-something is something special here. The dunk by Mayberry, final 40 seconds. Well, you remember the closest that they have come to being beat since that UC Santa Barbara loss was Ball State. Ball Harris, State had the ball, had right. a chance to beat Harris him. Harris McCurdy slipped trying to go around the corner, not to say he would have made the shot, but that's the closest anybody came. Billy, we've got to say thanks to our group here. The coordinating producer of NCAA basketball is Bob Dekas from today's game directed by Robert A. Fishman. The Prudential at the half produced by Rob Silverstein. And the executive producer of CBS Sports is Ted Shaker. Just too many weapons here today. A stronger team physically. Stacy still over there talking to the bench a little bit. A lot of pride in this club. You know, they say they do not discuss the, the fact that they have a chance to make history. They never talk about it, they say, but you know they're certainly aware of it. Well, I believe and they won. One of the reasons for that is that their coach doesn't get hung up in all that type of conversation. I believe Jerry, when he really says it, that he never discusses winning even a given game. The object under his teams and his tutelage throughout his career as a junior college coach and Division one coach is to play as hard as you can doing the fundamental things that you do in practice every day. And if you do that, then in effect, you've been successful. You know, Coach Wooden used to always have exactly. the same philosophy. Never talked about winning before a game. Got to go out and win, guys. He would never say that. Just play to the best of your ability. You know, I, I talked to him yesterday after watching the two practices, and I said, Jerry, today was one of the few days that I have watched your team practice when the opponent had more intensity than you had. And he was very disappointed with yesterday's practice, said his team was both flat and a little bit tired. They sure didn't come out here this, today this way in the second half. That is a downtown bomb and nothing there. 
That was from Mayberry it Country. Was. That was a that was a 32 footer, and we know one fellow that can make those, Tracy Murray. But I don't know if there are many more in the country that can hit them. Tracy Murray last week of UCLA was putting up. What would you say, 25, 28 footers? Without question, and and easy. There's Nolan Richardson, an outstanding player himself. Average a little over 14 a game. Played a little bit of professional football also, right. Nolan did. He played for the San Diego Chargers for a year. It was interesting. He thought he was a big scorer in college until Don Haskins showed up and said, uh, fella, I've watched you play. You can't guard a telephone pole. Let's get you refocused there. The Bear got him. Stressing defense. Murray jumper connects, and that's a 10 point difference. And Miller would have been better off letting that one go. Final five seconds. Well, this uh, team, Billy, is it a dynasty in the desert? Well, this team has proven today certainly that they're ready to go to the very next level and take on all challenges. Without question, it's everybody in the country against these fellas. They continue on their march toward the tournament, the chance to join UCLA with back-to-back -back championships. First time since. <laughs> 